Incoming transmission. Welcome, watchers of Illusion, to my Castle of Confusion. It's the 17th of January, 2017, and I've got a specky arcade conversion for you. Oh, yes, Rolling Thunder, and what a classic game that is. And if you notice in the top left-hand corner, you'll see the arcade original uh, playing alongside. Now, I think this is absolutely brilliant. There's... Uh, there's no in-game music or anything like that. The sounds are a little bit sparse. But, you know, we can forgive that because this game is an absolute legend. Those of you who haven't played Rolling Thunder before, where have you been? This game's brilliant. Love this game. I always have loved this game. I believe I had this on the Spectrum as well, actually, back when I had my, uh, my humble little ZXA 48K, which is now up in the loft. Boo-hoo, but it's still boxed. Hey-hey. Cha-ching! Anyway, um, you can see up the uh, top there, I'm, I'm going to try and do this as a new feature. If there is an arcade conversion of something that I'm reviewing, I'm going to try and pop some footage of it up in the top left-hand corner for you guys to check out. Um, just so you can see a sort of a side, not a side-by-side, -side, but at least you can have a see a sort of comparison until I get to do the proper back-to-back -back attack uh, feature. Anyway, but this is the closest I'm going to get at the moment. But anyway... Graphically, it's absolutely spot on. You've got uh, the levels are pretty faithful there. Um, all the doors are there that you pop in there to top up your ammunition count, which is great. The only thing that I found that the uh, specky is a bit sort of twitchy on is that jumping up to the next level. You've got to hit the fire button and jump at the same time, otherwise it won't do it. Now the other thing is that, I don't know if it's just that the arcade wasn't doing it at the time but these guys duck and fire at you now you don't get that until level two on the arcade but you know i can forgive that as well the um i mean it's bloody faithful i mean look at the graphics they're absolutely brilliant i can't shoot that guy for some reason I mean, my my timing is so off with that guy but um don't ever expect to see an exact side by side by the way because uh Sometimes my game playing skills don't coincide. Sometimes the arcade conversions are harder than the actual arcade or vice versa. But at least you can sort of see the differences anyway. But it, it's great. I mean, the graphic graphics are absolutely superb. Yes, it's only, you know, one colour on the screen. But then you've got the lovely Rolling Thunder logo at the top. And then you've got um, your bullets and your life counts and stuff like that at the bottom. So there is a bit of varied colour on the screen. It's just that you're main sort of playing area isn't that colourful. You've got the blue floor, yellow um <laughs> yellow wallpaper. Yes. Yes, it's uh it's an interesting mishmash of colour, but uh never mind, it works. And then your guy is wearing a uh, black top as well. They could have just got away with putting him in completely yellow. And also black shoes. So they've made a pretty good pretty good job of getting this absolutely spot on. Um this game is great. I think you'd, you'd probably enjoy it. It's, you know, it's a fairly simple concept. It's just a left and right, um, well, it's actually just, yeah, left and right scroller. Um, and then you shoot anything that moves. Now you'll see here, this guy doesn't actually try and kill me, which is, a, I thought that was a bit strange. And he just <laughs> let me shoot him in the face. But, you know, you can forgive these small little blips because we're working with 48K here, not 128K, which is even, you know, which is even more impressive when you think about it. I mean, the level design is practically the same as the arcade here, so you know we are getting a decent, um, a decent experience, and you know I think if you can get something this faithful in 48k, I mean, yeah, you sacrifice a few of the sounds and you sacrifice the music. Not that the music was ever that impressive on the actual arcade anyway, but you know you've got essentially an arcade game in within 48k of memory. There we go. Now we've got a nice full screen shot so you can see the full playing field. Okay, so very faithful and 
everything is pretty much spot on. Now, you'll notice you've got a life gauge there at the bottom. Uh, that doesn't deplete if you get shot. That actually just completely runs out if you get shot. Uh, you can you can get hit by them, as in they can walk up to you and sort of collide with you. you see I'm having real problems getting up there. Um, so you can get hit by, by them themselves, but if you get shot, it's game over, basically, for your lives. They're pretty generous with your lifespan. There you go. You can see there now I've lost about uh, five health bars just from colliding with that guy. Now, the other quite amusing thing is sometimes you'll see that there uh, there was a guy up there originally. Um, you'll see that there's like grenades going off and there's guys on the screen, but then when you sort of go back, they've completely vanished for whatever reason. So there are a couple of glitchy things like that, but you know, I'm not going to nitpick because I love this game. I think it's really, really good fun and a game I haven't actually played for a long time. But if you compare it to the arcade um, graphics earlier on, you can see that they are practically spot on. You know, you can't really complain when you've got a game that's so faithful to the arcade original. And this game is just pure fun, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the idea is basically just to get from A to B, and uh, from the look of the arcade game, I believe you've got to go on a... This is like a rescue mission. You're trying to rescue your girlfriend or wife or something from these cult members. They're always cult members, aren't they? They're, they're never, like, businessmen or anything like that. They're always cult members. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say who they look like. I think you can work that out for yourself, but... Uh, yes. Um... So yeah, I mean it's 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 literally so easy to pick up and play. I mean this will do for most age ranges as well. So from beginner to uh, uh, expert, you'll be able to pick this game up and instantly get into it. Very simple. But um, yeah, they've kept everything in, which is nice. There doesn't seem to be much sacrifice being made here, apart from the colours. But as a Spectrum owner, you don't expect there to be a ton of colour. So you know we can really forgive that. But there, everything's there. The jumping up and down from ledges is there, albeit a little tricky at times to actually pull that off. But, hey, it's it's a Spectrum game. You know, it could be worse. There, see, there, there was an explosion at the top there. I bet you, if I go up there now, he's probably gone. So to get up there, you can see I can I was clearing that quite easily, but to, to do it, I had to do the big jump up there. That's a bit strange, but never mind. Green crates. I suppose he's supposed to be shipping crates. And there, no, there is nobody there. Ooh, where did he go? But uh, and I'm not sure what what's with all these sort of black spots on the uh, on the backdrop either. But that's you know that's all down to the designers. They must have had a bit of a oh I know black spots on yellow looks great. I suppose it's to make it look less bland. But on the sound score, nothing really to talk about. There are gun noises. There is the uh, blips as you get hit. Other than that, there really isn't any sound to to speak of. Difficulty wise. It's fairly good. Um, you'll you'll get along quite well. Uh, you might need to play it a couple of times to get used to it, but once you've got that down to a T, you're all set to go. Anyway, guys, that's been Rolling Thunder on the ZX Spectrum. I will catch you again soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye for now.